Incredibly, in the Apollo era, only one mission was canceled on the launch pad with astronauts on board. It was Gemini 6, and that's the story we're talking about today on Vintage Space. Both the Mercury and the Apollo rockets are notable for having launch escape towers on top of the spacecraft. Those are the lattice-like structures with rockets underneath that in an emergency the astronauts could fire and it would pull the capsule completely away from a rocket and land it safely by parachute. Gemini didn't use a launch escape tower, instead it used ejection seats, pretty typical for a pilot but still pretty different for the space age. In an emergency on the launch pad, either astronaut could pull a D-ring and send both of them shooting out the open doors of the spacecraft and parachuting to safety. The only time astronauts ever had to consider using this system was on Gemini 6A. Gemini 6 was supposed to launch on October 25th of 1966. The mission was designed to rendezvous and dock with an Agena target vehicle, but on the morning of launch the mission was actually cancelled. The crew, Wally Schrock, and Tom Safford were sitting inside the spacecraft ready to go on the launch pad waiting for their Atlas Agena to launch. That was the vehicle that they were going to be docking with in orbit. However, the Agena didn't make it to orbit. The second stage failed and it exploded and NASA decided to cancel the mission. If it wasn't going to dock with anything, what was the point of wasting the flight? Instead, the agency decided on a very interesting mission for Gemini 6. It would launch it coincident with Gemini 7 and have the two manned vehicles do a rendezvous but not a docking in orbit, the first of its kind. Gemini 7 Seven launched on December 4th of 1966 with Jim Lovell and Frank Borman on board. The two astronauts were getting a little bit lonely and were pretty pleased that Shira and Stafford would be joining them on December 12th. However, they didn't quite make it on that date. Everything looked great going through the countdown, but the launch was aborted one second after ignition because an electrical umbilical separated prematurely. In the spacecraft, a light came on in the console that said they had liftoff, but Shira didn't feel himself moving from the pad. He couldn't feel it in the seat of his pants, and it turned out that the seat of his pants was right. An electrical connector vibrated loose in the split second before launch, sending a shutdown signal to the Titan's first stage engines. And the crew was exceedingly lucky that the Titan hadn't actually taken flight. Had they even gotten a few inches off the launch pad when the engines shut down, they would have fallen back down and it would have exploded. It really kind of would have been the Vanguard launch, that famous fly all over again. But because the rocket didn't move, it just stayed put and everything just shut down. Neither Shira nor Stafford pulled the D-ring to eject, and in orbit, Borman and Lovell could actually see the cloud of smoke from the launch abort. And it's a really good thing that they did not eject. Even though the system was designed for their safety, it would have been a bit of a painful ride owing to the high G-forces. Three days later, on December 15th, Gemini 6A did successfully leave the Earth and met Gemini 7 in orbit. So what do you guys think? Would you have had the presence of mind to realize that you hadn't felt liftoff and not pull that D-ring? Let me know in the comments below, and if you have other questions about the Gemini 6A launch abort, leave those in the comments as well. And of course, ideas and questions for future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space updates, and with new episodes going up every Tuesday and Friday, subscribe so you never miss an episode.